So I'd like to call on stage uh, Kathy Brooks, who is uh, hosting uh, with Thomas Crampton and Ben Metcalf the uh, startup competition. And our judges, we have uh, Pierre Kosciusko Morizé. You should come in. Uh, Freddy Mini and, uh, and Mark Sommier. Please have seats. Welcome. So Kathy Brooks, Pierre Kosciusko Morizé, uh, Mark Sommier. <laughs> You're so polite, you don't know where to sit, and Freddy Mini. And um, we, so how is it going on over there? Still no internet. Still no internet. Okay. I didn't and, want. And apparently no voice. I'm not sure where my voice went this morning. So, you know, from Itai uh, this morning, we heard that in any you know, situation, you smile and everything is okay. Absolutely. Right. So, you know, we're just enjoying you. You have to look at this as an opportunity and not as a problem. Well, and it's about flexibility and adaptability. Right. Right, and uh, I think many um, many startups have uh, still done a great job, right, and being creative. They, and they've been very, very creative. It's an elevator pitch. You don't need an internet connection in. Uh, in uh, well, it depends elevator. on the elevator, but not generally. So I shut up. I let you. You know, <laughs> give us a ten-minute update. So uh, first, I'd like to introduce the fine gentlemen who are sitting with me to my side here. I have immediately to my right is Freddie Mini from Net Vibes. We have oh. Mark Samware from the European. Founders Fund. And apparently, my voice is just going to disappear as I'm talking here. And of course, Pierre Kosciuszko Morizé. I got that right, didn't I? Yeah, very good pronunciation. From Thank Price you. Minister. So, gentlemen, we had a bit of a challenge in the startup competition this morning with no internet. So, what are your thoughts on how, how did the companies adapt? How did, how did they do this morning? Freddie, why don't you start? I think they did very well. You know, honestly, uh, first of all, it's a situation that happened. I'm sure that every, everybody who has done a demo ever in his life knows that, you know, that's the demo effect, you know, it doesn't work, and then there is no, you know, no internet. So basically, if you can sell, and you have to sell, in that kind of situation, you are kind of ready for, you know, the future. So I think it was a good test. Mark, what about you? I thought so too. I actually uh, thought that uh, if you have a good company and a good business concept, you don't need the internet to show it. You should be able to show why are you building a great company on five slides? Uh, what I missed a little bit was enthusiasm, dynamic, and I think the whole presentations, you know, this is a once in a lifetime chance to present to such a large group at the early phase of your company. And maybe there are 10, 15 people in this room, and most likely there's that many people in the room that maybe want to give you money if you, because this is an, you know, this is an, a conference about investors and en entrepreneurs and people who, who love uh, to do business on the internet and build companies. So, you know, you should sell. And I sometimes missed the selling in the presentations. And Pierre, what do you think? Yeah, I, I personally think that um, no presentation should be done live ever because, because it's, it doesn't bring much and it's always a big risk. So I think it's, uh, as an entrepreneur, you never should do a live presentation. Uh, what, what I was surprised about this morning is that there was a big difference between presentations with some um, entrepreneurs being very good at explaining how they would make money eventually and with some of them not talking at all about it. And, and I think that's uh, not the way to start a company. I think a company should be meant to have, one, a great product with people using it and second, but together, a way of making money. So, so I was a bit surprised about that, but uh, uh, some of the companies were very good at explaining it, at, at explaining it and, uh, and I hope we uh, correctly uh, understood what they, what they explained us. Fred, you sounded like you had something to add to that as well. No, I totally agree with Pierre. Uh, definitely, what I said uh, afterwards uh, to one of the competitors was, uh, it's better to lose today and be on a lucrative market than win this morning and being on a non-lucrative market. So. Uh, you know, of course, it's better if you are win today with a lucrative market, of course, you know. And, and of course, we are in a recession. A lot of these companies are, some of them are looking for money and they're trying to build businesses in markets that are maybe nascent. So what are your thoughts about the future of some of the, the companies or the trends that you saw this morning in light of the kind of economic times that we're in, Mark? I think it's going to be very hard. Um, when you talk to people from the U.S., you hear that they have cut costs the day after Lehman went down, uh, and they have cost uh, they have cut costs dramatically, 30 percent. They have laid off uh, 30 30 percent, up to 30 percent of their uh, people. And here in Europe, especially in continental Europe, I'm talking about Germany, but I'm also talking about France, Italy, Spain. 
people have not understood the extent of the crisis and are reacting too slow. And uh, this applies to startups as much as companies which are just only starting now. Um, and therefore, I'm actually very pessimistic on many of those companies uh, looking for funding because it will be very, very difficult. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think actually many companies will not find funds, but I think that the one who will, which will find funds, it will be a, a great period. Uh, uh, and actually, we, uh, I founded Price Minister in August 2000. So that was right after the internet crash. And it was great because we had almost no competition. Uh, and I think that's a great time to start a company. It's very hard to find the money. But if you do find it, you will have less competition. And the good thing is, as an investor, you, you want to sell your shares when the market is high. So the best time to invest is when the market is down. Because it increases the, the probability that the market will be high when you sell, by the time you sell. So I think it's a, it's a great time to invest uh, in new companies, definitely. Can I quickly Please. add something? I think so too. I think this is the best time to build a company uh, because there are just not that many venture-funded companies around. But you have to, even more important is that you have to be very clear what your business model is. And Pierre and I sat on the panel this morning and I think with almost all five companies, we were really wondering what exactly is the business model? How exactly they want to make money? Because that is the most important question for the next three years to go forward. So everyone who wants to start a company now should really focus on this one question he has to explain to his uh, potential investors. How can I make money? Uh, in fact, just, uh, I'd just like to rebound on what you just said because before it would be maybe some you know, confusion in terms of there is the crisis and then automatically you need to lay off between 15 to 30 percent just to do like everybody else. Uh, it's not like that. I mean, and, you know, if you have a plan, if you have a business plan and if you are on your plan to get to where you said you would go in terms of profitability of the company, you know, just focus on what you are doing. And, uh, you know, if I think that, uh, you know, the companies who will survive 2009 will be probably strong for the years after for, for a long time. So why don't we talk a little bit about some of the trends that you might have seen among the companies this morning. You were, uh, we had the companies grouped in kind of categories. What kind of trends did you see, uh, Mark, perhaps starting with you, um, among the companies in your group this morning? So the strongest trend I saw was uh, local, local search and connecting the local community of merchants with the local community. Um, and I like this trend. This is certainly a big trend. Uh, Google Maps makes it possible to make it really easy to show um, maps and visualize local search. At the same time, it's a very difficult space to monetize um, because you need to create critical uh, scale. And the startups who presented this morning in the panel I was sitting on um, didn't answer the question how they want to reach the community and build scale in a, in a feasible manner, meaning, you know, without spending millions of dollars advertising to this community. Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, with the same panel as, as Mark, so I, I, I saw the same trend, which is good news. Um, and so it was a, about, about, a lot about local. The feeling I had is that sometimes the problem might be when the companies get, ver get very big, the services get very big, the um, user interface might not be well adapted, and I think it's, it's an issue. Uh, when you start a company, of course, you want to think about how it would happen if you get very, very, very big. And, and some user interfaces, well, I had the impression that it would not be very scal scalable, um, which might not be a problem at the start, but we hope for these companies that it would become a problem when they get very big, so. Ready. Uh, it was all, all about, for the section I was in, all about collaboration and all about uh, user-generated content and, you know, what people think about, uh, you know, a product or service and vote for this or vote for that. So it's definitely a natural evolution and uh, uh, it's not really new and, you know, uh, it was two years ago, you know, something absolutely fantastic. I think that we see more and more application of that. So it's moving in the very right direction. So when you look at the companies from today, how do they differ perhaps from companies that you might have seen at a, at a conference like this maybe a year ago. And looking forward, how do you think they might differ looking forward as well? Uh, I don't think they were so different, and I think they, they should have. I think they should have been more focused on making money quickly. I, I insist a lot on it, but I think that in a crisis, investors will focus on these companies 
Um, so I, I think that's the focus of the companies which uh, will uh, find funding in the coming months will be how, how soon do we get profitable, uh, how do we make money, and how do we keep cost base low. So I think that should have been the focus. But in 10 minutes, it's hard to, to, have, you know, to talk about too many things. So maybe it, it's in their focus, and they didn't have enough time to, to explain it. Excellent. Well, thank you. Unfortunately, 10 minutes is not very much time, but that gives you a taste of what the startup competition has been all about. Hopefully, you all will get a chance to check out some of the companies that are over there. Loic, please welcome. Uh, I was going, going to, to join thank us. You. <laughs> I was go just going to thank you very much. Well, you're very welcome. So thank you very much, and see you again uh, shortly to get uh, other updates. Thank you. Uh, thank you, our judges. You should, you know, like applaud the judges because it's a lot of work, and uh, and there are these judges and more judges right now over there, and uh, they are um, also giving a lot of advice to the startups.